actually I know. Okay. Right. Right. Exactly. So you guys will have to. You guys will have to. There are two things which you guys will have to do. So you guys can come and join us. The first thing is to believe that Allah is the God who is one and only, and Muhammad is the Messenger of God. The moment you say this, you can come and join us. We actually go to our own church. Yep. That's why we read the Book of Mormon and the Bible. Okay. I have the Bible here, but I don't have the Book of Mormons in this. I have the Bible here, but I don't have the Book of Mormons in this. Bible has got a lot of books, right? This one has got 66. Yeah. But I don't find the Book of Mormon in that. It's because the Book of Mormon is another book. Okay. It's another testament of Jesus Christ. Okay. It takes place on another continent. Where? Um, on the Americas. Uh, the first prophet in the Book of Mormon okay. moved from Jerusalem okay. to America. But what I'm, and it's a record of those people. Right. But I'm, when, I'm, when I'm actually reading the Book of Revelations, it says that nothing should be added into this book after that. Yeah, that is actually just referring to the Book of Revelations. Okay. So it says this book. Okay. The Book of Revelation. Because That's interesting. Revelation was written before many of the books of the Bible. Okay. So. Right, right, right. John was written after that. John's Gospel was written after the book of Revelation was written. Yeah. The epistles of John were written after the book of Revelation were written. Yeah. Right? But what makes you think that book of uh, Mormons is the last testament? We don't think it's the last testament. Okay. Um, because we know that God loves his children. Okay. And Mm -hmm. There were other groups left in Jerusalem. We just don't have their scripture yet. Okay. Um, we get their scripture as we are prepared as a society. But right now, sorry, say that again. Prepared. Say that again about the about the prophets. You said the prophets. Yeah. There were multiple prophets. Okay. But called of God, but there is one in. Life. So they are at the time of Jesus. You mean those prophets were at the time of Jesus, or? You said something about the prophets in Jerusalem, right? Yeah. 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 Right now, we believe that there is a prophet. Okay. There. But back then, if we only had one prophet, how would the rest of the world think Christ's prophet? So, how do you know what this prophet said was right? What is? How do you examine that? Because we know he was called of God. We he was called what? He was called of God and given the power of God. Okay. So, but how do you know? Because usually, like, I used to meet with, with Mormons before I became Muslim. And they would just tell me, you just have to pray, and then that's how you know. Like, you just have some experience. So, is there an objective way you can know? Yeah. If you pray with, there's a promise in the back of the Book of Mormon that says, if you pray with a sincere heart, real intent and faith, you will know for yourself. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, because we know that the Holy Ghost sent. But is there like a way outside of yourself that you can know? Because like, for example, we can look at the preservation of the Quran and that, that's one evidence that we know that it's from, from God and not from other people. But like just to have some experience that ensures me inside that it's true, like it's not really, it's just something personal. It's kind of like receiving your own witness from the Holy Ghost. Knowing for yourself it's true. So is it just the Mormons have the Holy Ghost or everybody else have the Holy Ghost? You can feel, we usually explain it with the ring. I don't have one right now. No, no, that's okay. My question was, you have Jehovah's Witnesses, you have Catholics, you have born again, you have the Protestants, you have the Seventh-day Adventists, you have, name them. Everybody claims that they have the Holy Ghost. So who actually has the Holy Ghost? That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah, that was my question. You're asking the question back to me. Because, uh, how do you know? How, how do you, do you know? Because everybody claims Jehovah says that they have the Holy Ghost. The promise of the Holy Ghost, as you said. You claim that you have the Holy Ghost. This is true. Jay Smith goes to Speaker's Corner and gets five Qurans and shows them all different. Okay. Diacritical. Okay. Remarks. Dot. Things are raised out. You're, 
you have just interrupted a conversation. So, that's, that's, not being nice. that's not being nice. Well, you know what I'm Yeah, yeah, but that, you, does, you didn't answer my question. Everybody claim that they have the Holy Ghost. For example, the Jehovah's, the Seventh-day Adventists, the, the Protestants, the Catholics, the Barnagans. You name them. So my question is, when you say that the promise of the Holy Ghost is with the Mormons, how do you make that claim? And how is your claim different than the claim that's made by the other people who claim themselves to be Christians and have received the Holy Ghost? Well, we know that you can feel the Holy Ghost throughout your life. You can they feel, make the same claim. You can feel, no matter what religion you are, there will be times in your life you can feel the Holy Ghost. But it's not until you are baptized and mm -hmm. you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost by being baptized by okay. someone holding the priesthood authority of God. Mm -hmm. That's when you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost so, it has been so great very good. Judas, guys. he was one of the disciples of Jesus and he received the Holy Ghost. Jesus mentioned that in the Gospel of John chapter 20, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And yeah. all the disciples of Jesus, they received the Holy Ghost and Ju Judas was one of them. After receiving the Holy Ghost, why did Judas betray Jesus? Because he has free agency. agency so even after receiving the Holy Ghost, you're still chances that you can get astray, right? It, yeah, so what's the point of getting the Holy Ghost then? So you can have the constant companionship. It can help guide you in your day-to-day -day life. You can still have your free agency. You so what deceived Judas? Ghost. What deceived Judas is my question. Uh, After receiving the Holy Ghost. Temptations from Satan. So that's what I'm saying. So the temptation of Satan is, is more powerful than the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, we, are, we do know that we have trials here on the earth. And trials will either break your So the devil is more powerful. The devil but is more powerful than the power of the Holy yeah, Ghost. Only if you let it. It's really that personal choice to decide who, who you're gonna let. Okay, no, so because yeah. Jesus was also tempted by the Shaitan. Jesus, in, you know, if you read the Gospel of Mark, chapter one, verse number thirteen, yeah. Jesus was tempted by the devil for forty days. So how was it that Jesus was not able to, even after getting baptized, was still Tempted by, tempted by the devil for 40 days. Because How did he let the devil tempt him for 40 days? Um, it's not that he let the devil tempt us, but the devil will tempt us throughout the rest of our life. Do you have any proof for that? It's just we, well, it's just that the child is so You'll receive trials throughout your entire life. And you'll receive temptation throughout your entire life. Um, but it's how you react. But in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says that the devil is the god of the world. Devil is the god of the world. So when devil is called as the god of the world, then how can you win over God? Holy Ghost is not going to help you there. You know what I mean? Like he's become the god now. He has also tempted Jesus for 40 days. And everybody claims to have the Holy Ghost. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, and I, I think it's, it's really amazing how, how much you love your gospel. And I think it's so cool that you stand out here and you teach the word. Have you guys read the Quran before? We, we do as well. So can, I get, can I give you guys one? You could, but it might be more useful for someone else. Why? I mean, you know, it's useful for everybody who takes it. I think your church doesn't allow you to take it. So that's okay. I mean, we can take yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah you know, just read it, you know. And the Quran actually talks about Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. The Quran is one of the last and the final revelation of Almighty God. The last and the final revelation of Almighty God, which was revealed on the last and the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Because the Quran is the last and the final revelation of Almighty God, it was not revealed only for the Muslims or only for the Arabs, it was revealed for the whole of humanity. And because Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him is the last and the final messenger, he was sent for the whole of humanity. And this is not just a, you know, uh, an explanation that's actually backed up from the Quran. God mentions that in the Quran. In Surah Anbiya chapter 21 verse 107, God says, Wama salanka illa rahmat That we have sent thee not but as a mercy for the whole of humanity. You know what I'm saying? The message of Jesus was confined to the people of Israelites. Gospel of Matthew chapter 10 verses 5 to 6 says, Jesus Christ says to his direct elect, to his disciples, he says, go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are the non-Jews. All of us are Gentiles. Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. 
enter E not into the city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the message of Jesus was confined to the Israelites. He was not sent for the whole of humanity, and the Quran confirms that. In Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 49, God says that we have sent Jesus as a messenger to the Bani Israel, to the children of Israel. That's the reason if you read the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verse number 26, to be precise, Jesus refused to help a woman who was a non Jew. That woman was not asking Jesus for any material gains. He was asking to seek some blessings from Jesus. He, he allowed a sinful Jewish woman to rub his feet, but he didn't allow to give blessings to a non-Jewish woman. Because he said, don't throw bread in front of the dogs. Well, I love how much yeah. Really, you have to no I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, very. Sounds good. You guys take care, okay? Yeah.